Hi, this is Coach World TV, and I'm Laurie Lawson. And tonight, I am so thrilled. I have an international delight. <laughs> <Thank> <laughs> Elena Moro, and this is her second time, and she's here from Italy. So there are no words to say how thrilled I am that, that she came. Welcome, Elena. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> and thank you for fitting. I know you're running around town and doing all those New York things, but thank you for fitting into your time. Um, Coach World TV. <laughs> Thank you for the opportunity. It's, uh, yes, and the reason I really wanted to have her on, besides she's one of my favorite people, um, <laughs> is that every time I talk to Elena, she has a different thing going on, and it's all about coaching, and it's all so exciting. So I want to first get, I want to just do a brief thing. Tell me what coaching, how acceptable is coaching in Italy now? Well, now in Italy, coaching is really growing. Uh, corporations especially are uh, quite using coaching for the executives. Uh, they would like also to use coaching for uh, the middle management, uh, but in Europe, as you probably know, now there is a big crisis, economic crisis, <laughs> so the budget are all, uh, right. are all cut. Now, when do, is that a new, um, a new development because I, it seems like the last time I talked to you we were talking about how traditional Italy was and they really weren't into they couldn't quite grasp coaching so it has yeah I, come I around. have to say that in the last two years uh, they uh, especially the big companies the corporation uh, they really touched uh, the value of uh, coaching projects uh, on mm. their executives uh, especially uh, so, and, and the other big point is that now they uh, start preferring uh, uh, coaching to training, uh, especially for, uh, for the executives. Ah, good for you. And coaching is uh, more well known, uh, uh, and people now, HR manager especially, they can understand uh, what we are talking about. Uh, also because they tried uh, with, uh, with some projects. Uh, so mm -hmm. let's say that uh, till a couple of years ago there was uh, interest and curiosity, uh, but uh, some co companies were just using coaching because they are international companies. Uh, and, and they so just didn't really get it yet. Yeah. It's like, what is that new thing and why do I need it? I've got my trainers in here and I've got things like that, yeah. Yeah, definitely. Now they understand uh, uh, what coaching is about mm -hmm. and in fact uh, the market is changing because the, the market is growing of course uh, uh, but especially the big companies corporations uh, they want uh, certified coaches ah. so also the number of coaching is growing uh, and is growing the number of certified uh, coaches otherwise it's quite difficult to work uh, with companies uh, if you uh, are not at least an ACC ICF uh, mm -hmm. certified we have we have the same thing here it's um, basically it's the, I think I'm not sure they don't they really don't know what questions to ask so the first question that are you certified are you ICF certified and I'm, it's like I'm a, okay yes. <laughs> yeah <laughs> because I think I think employers here you know it's like yeah we like coaching we, but what, what should we ask to find out if it's a qualified coach so that that's become I'm, I'm glad to hear that that's in Italy also yeah in Italy in Italy also and I have to say that now I'm working uh, with uh, small, uh, well, not really small, medium companies uh, mm -hmm. in uh, in Italy, and also the medium companies now uh, they know that uh, there are uh, certified uh, coaches. Uh, so usually the medium companies they work uh, with people uh, um, uh, they know or with people that have been introduced to them, uh, so they trust. Uh, uh, the, the, the person, mm -hmm. but of course, if you say I'm a certified coach, uh, one they, step ahead, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. and they prefer uh, because again, for the big corporation, uh, being a certified coach uh, uh, means that you are qualified. And the HR manager, when he goes to his boss saying uh, we have to approve uh, this project, uh, of course, it's easier if uh, he can certify mm -hmm. that the, the people are uh, going to be in the project. Well, it's kind of like if qualified. somebody else has done the work. It's like they've already, uh, you know, said that okay, this is person is qualified to be yeah. a coach. So then the boss doesn't have to keep <laughs> asking the same question yeah, over and over. Exactly. <laughs> well, what, what kind of coach are you in in Italy? Well, uh, I'm a, um, I'm a, I prefer to be a business coach, uh, which is not so common uh, in Italy. And uh, that's uh, amazing because in America, 
We have tons of business got, coaches. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's why I'm <laughs> affiliated <laughs> to the New York chapter. Yes. <laughs> Not too much. Yeah, I forgot to tell you. Another reason she's one of my favorite people is that she is a member of the ICF NYC chapter. And, you know, she could do that in Italy, but she chose us. Yes. yes. <laughs> I'm very a glad woman of good it. taste. Yes. <laughs> And uh, I'm a business coach. I have to say that the business coaches are not so common uh, in, uh, in Italy. Uh, and I'm a business coach uh, because of my background. Uh, I've never worked uh, for the HR department. Uh, I've, uh, I have been working as a consultant for top tier uh, consulting companies. Uh, and then I have been a manager uh, for many years, uh, but uh, always online or, uh, or but w online and staff departments. Uh, but staff uh, were not uh, were never HR uh, HR departments. So mm, uh, okay. I prefer to be a business coach because uh, I have uh, the um, the language, uh, and I have to say that especially for the medium companies in Italy. Uh, I think it's important uh, to present himself uh, or herself uh, like uh, a business coach because they need really uh, activities, uh, coaching activities, uh, yes, on the behavioral, uh, um, on the behavioral side, uh, but also linked uh, to the strategy of the company because these kind of companies uh, sometimes uh, they don't have a very clear strategy, mm -hmm. uh, especially in Italy. I mean. You, you find uh, uh, companies, uh, well, um, they can be of also of 300 uh, million dollars uh, revenues, uh, but they don't have uh, a, a strategic planning, for example, a strategic planning process. Mm -hmm. so Are you saying that it, the good thing about being a coach and a consultant is that you, if they're not, if they don't have a clear plan, you can help them get a clear plan by coaching. Is that yeah, yeah. definitely. So m my being a business coach uh, uh, means that sometimes I'm a coach uh, without telling to the entrepreneur because the entrepreneur just calls me uh, uh, for a, a consultant mm. for consultancy. But then uh, I understand that the first steps, uh, if, especially if we are working on the strategic planning, uh, are business coaching sessions. So I don't tell the entrepreneur that ah, we are doing coaching. Ah, she sneaks know? in <laughs> coaching. <laughs> but, but actually, to their benefit, good. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, I mean the tools I use uh, are the, 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 the questions, of course, uh, and the, the coaching tools, uh, and usually they are very, very uh, happy of that. But again, if you go to an entrepreneur in Italy of a, a, a small medium company and you say well uh, we can work on your strategic planning uh, with business coaching they say oh I don't need a coach I'm an entrepreneur I know what I have to do uh, it, at least I need a consultant uh, so you know uh, it's the way you sell the word uh, you know what that's an international thing because a lot of coaches when they first come out of, of coaching school it's like I'm a coach and I can help you. And then if you're talking to an executive, the first thing he's going to say, I don't need help. Thank you. <laughs> I'm, an, I'm a top guy. And if I need help, I'm not going to admit it to you. So, <laughs> so that's a very curvy way, let's say a curvy way to get in there and do that. What made you decide to become a coach of all things in Italy? Uh, well, uh, I decided because when I, I was 45, more or less, I, I wanted to have fun, uh, <laughs> more fun than a uh, woman uh, after my own heart. Yes, yes. <laughs> if not fun, why uh, not? <laughs> and uh, I well, I, I had a very good uh, job as the director of a big company. I was the strategic planning director of a very big company in Italy. Uh, but uh, I wanted to, um, uh, to uh, mix uh, my personal interests uh, with uh, my professional interests. Uh, so ah. uh, as my personal interests uh, were regarding uh, uh, people, uh, uh, not Fantastic. only companies. Yeah. Uh, and uh, I, I had some training, uh, but just, just for fun, uh, of uh, NLP, uh, Aura Soma with chromotherapy. We're going to tell you all about that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm so um, excited. <laughs> I, I just was looking for uh, a professional uh, activity that could uh, merge uh, my background uh, and, uh, and my interests. Uh, and uh, I, I had to say that coaching uh, 
uh, was the one uh, I thought uh, uh, was the, the right one for me. And I have mm -hmm. to say, after four, five years, uh, that you know, you uh, made yeah. a good decision. Yeah. Yeah. I'm very happy with the decision. Now, did you get your training in Italy? Yes, I, oh, I had okay. my training in Italy uh, at a school uh, uh, who uses uh, a, a, a London brand, a, a UK brand, mm -hmm. uh, TCP. Uh, but anyhow, my training was based uh, in Italy. Okay. And, and five years ago, I know I can cite the differences between now and five years ago because coaching was just sort of getting in there. Had anybody even heard of the coach in Italy by then? Well, uh, five years ago, actually, some friends of mine were saying, "Are you crazy? You, <laughs> you, you, you are, you, you are a good consultant. You just go on with your consultancy uh, mm. activities. Uh, that, that's fine. And then uh, you, uh, you are so good at strategy, and uh, it, it, they are not so common the uh, strategy consultants." Uh, so they were saying, oh, "What do? You, why do you bother about this coaching? Uh, coaching why are you what messing this mean? up?" Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I have to say that five years ago, coaching in Italy uh, was uh, uh, considered by uh, big international companies. Mm -hmm. Now, after five years, uh, I'm working uh, with uh, small, medium companies uh, and uh, on middle management, uh, not only on executives. Uh, so. It, it's really different, and the market uh, really changed in the last five years. So I'm happy, anyhow, with my <laughs> uh, with my decision. Very happy. Well, tell me why you like working with middle management, because for my me, I know they're in the middle, and it seems like they get squeezed by everybody. They've got, yeah. the, you know, and they're like they're being pulled. So I can see a need, but why why do you like? That seems uh, to be the biggest challenge. I would yeah, think. It's, yeah, it's uh, it, well, I I love it uh, because uh, you know, in um, in the me, let's say medium company is in Italy the middle management actually is the core of the company in the sense mm -hmm. that those guys uh, are the ones uh, uh, who uh, own uh, strategic uh, processes of the company and sometimes in this company you don't have a very clear uh, and uh, strategy but the point is that sometimes the strategy is very clear in the mind of entrepreneur or uh, or of a mm, general manager or ceo but it's not well communicated mm. so sometimes you have a gap between uh, the managers and the middle management uh, but the middle management uh, is the one uh, who's really in a way running uh, uh, the the company in the sense of uh, having things done and uh, and so it's really important to work on them because uh, to me they are the core uh, of uh, of the company and sometimes uh, they have some uh, uh, some needs uh, coming from the fact that, uh, uh, for example, if they were grown up uh, from a professional standpoint uh, in the company, uh, they didn't have training about uh, what really means uh, being a leader or working in teams. Uh, uh, so sometimes uh, they need just to be trained on that. Uh, but then if you have opportunity to work uh, in a coaching process, uh, and in fact, uh, I usually try to design a long run projects uh, with some uh, with some mm -hmm. clients of mine. Uh, it's really interesting because they they when um, once they have the concept uh, clear in their mind, uh, they really start to change their their be behaviors. And I have to say that sometimes I found I found I find uh, people uh, uh, much more willing than the executives. Uh, <laughs> really, you know, willing to try to do things, uh, get along better uh, with uh, colleagues uh, with whom they had some conflicts uh, uh, and trying to have things uh, done uh, um, in a nice uh, and good way for the company because usually they really feel to be part of the company and uh, and they want to create value for the company and this is also of course uh, of some executives but you know executives in Italy sometimes they feel like well I, I'm here now I don't know if the company will uh, will have me here uh, in the next uh, three years mm. uh, and so they um, sometimes they don't think in the long run uh, while the middle management uh, they usually think uh, that they will be there for the next uh, 20 years then mm. even if it's not true at the end but they their feeling is I'm here I want to uh, to work uh, well here 
and I want to get along well with my colleagues. You made a couple of interesting points because I hadn't really thought about it, but the executive, first of all, is, is in a smaller group. If there, there may be one, there may be a few, but so he doesn't really have to answer to many people and he can go, you know, bring his rules down to the middle management. Mm -hmm. But the people who are actually executing and doing the, the goals and the company strategies are the middle management. So if you don't communicate to them or if they don't understand what you're doing, then I can see how you would be doomed. Um, and, and I'm not sure, even in America, I'm not sure that executives totally understand that, the importance of that, that middle, middle part there that's actually doing what you're telling them to do, they're asking them to do to get the company going. So what, do you, you mostly work with middle management do you, and a few executives? Is that how that works? Uh, well, uh, usually in this kind of project, uh, if I work for a company uh, in Italy, they tend to have uh, uh, a di different coaches for the management, for the middle management. Yeah, okay. So if uh, I'm the coach of a middle management, usually I'm not the coach of executives. That makes sense. So it depends, yeah. you know, on, on the client. Uh, I have to say that as, as I'm, I work by myself, uh, uh, if I work with corporation, uh, uh, I, I'm usually called uh, by a coaching company because corporations, they usually don't talk with a single coach. They want to talk with uh, companies. Again, uh, it's another layer of saying this person's already been checked out and yeah. she's a part of this company. So if you're working with middle management, what are some of the things you're working on? Leadership? Well, uh, usually, teamwork. yes, teamwork. Let's say that the most uh, common uh, subjects are uh, leadership, uh, teamwork, uh, um, the concept uh, of account accountability and responsibility. Mm, okay. uh, also, because I try, as uh, as you know, I'm very fond uh, of a systemic approach. Uh, when I work with a company, mm -hmm. I uh, usually uh, um, use the Enterprise 2.0 approach, which means a systemic uh, mm -hmm. approach. That means that each person uh, should be responsible of what he does or not does, uh, or uh, of what uh, uh, he says or not says. And, um, and in this sense, uh, uh, leadership, uh, responsibility, accountability, and also the concept of uh, being a process owner, a strategic process owner, are the most common subjects uh, I work with them. Now what is a strategic process owner? Uh, well, the strategic process owner is uh, someone uh, who's uh, in charge uh, of uh, a process uh, which is uh, really strategic for the company. That doesn't mean that it's uh, a high-level process. Uh, it mm -hmm. could be, you know, the way could I... Could be uh, the mailroom, right? Yeah, yeah definitely. Right? definitely. <laughs> That's important, yeah. Definitely. <laughs> Sometimes the middle management is not really aware of how strategic uh, the process they, they manage is. Uh, and so, again, it's a question of uh, communication about the strategy, uh, how you are important, uh, you, of course, mm -hmm. your role uh, uh, are, is important uh, and the people you manage. Uh, and I have to say that when they become aware of uh, uh, this, uh, 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 th this kind of uh, Im important subjects, uh, mm -hmm. they really change to act and they take their own responsibility, they understand what does that mean. Mm -hmm. uh, and they also understand uh, that, for example, delegate, which is another important <laughs> subject, <laughs> one, right, for right. forgotten. Um, delegate is really important. Uh, they understand that having people to think, uh, having uh, sorry time to think, uh, mm -hmm. it's much more important uh, that, that trying to do everything uh, by themselves, uh, mm -hmm. which is quite typical for the middle management. You know, because usually they just uh, grow. Uh, from the lower hierarchy levels, uh, and so right. they tend to look at de the details, uh, uh, tend to uh, continuously do the, the operational uh, activities they were doing before. But then if you are the boss, uh, or anyhow the leader of a team, uh, you should think uh, uh, of uh, uh, planning for the other ones, uh, uh, planning yeah. in the long run. Uh, 
and, and in this sense, working as a coach with a middle management, uh, to me, is really uh, challenging on one side because there are some people, you know, that just refuse the idea. Uh, but on the other side, uh, you can really see results immediately. I mean, in, in after the second, third session, you can see that people is changing their behavior. What I also I hear you saying, and I think it's almost so it, it, it's so important, is how to make people realize how they fit in with. I think this is systemic when you how they fit in to the bigger picture. Where's yeah. your place? Where do you fit in? What 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 do you do that affects other people? And I I agree with Elena. I don't think that people sometimes think about that. It's like oh my gosh, this is my job, and I'm going to do this and this. And it's like, but it, you don't realize where you are in the big puzzle. So. That must be a whole awareness thing all by itself. Just you know, getting them to see that oh, you are yeah. part of a, a bigger, a yeah. bigger thing going on there. And I have to say that realizing that for them is really important. Uh, and uh, often the, it, it determines it, it determines uh, the the shift. That that's a lot of the process. Yes. A lot of the coaching so. process. Yeah, yes. I would think so. Now, do you also coach individuals? Yes, I also coach individuals, and uh, for the individuals, I work uh, um, with executives and managers. I have to say, mm -hmm. most of them are executives and, and managers on a private uh, on a private basis. Oh. So they just come to me because they want they want a coach. And now uh, I have to say that also in Italy, uh, important executives they like the idea of having uh, the personal coach you know not the one given from the company but my own coach it's a, it's a, almost a status thing here in america it's like whoa we have our own coach and we have our own you know our own chauffeur and it's like yeah it's kind of like a status thing what you don't have your own coach yet <laughs> so that's good no you don't i mean so if somebody wanted to come to you and go um oh i need to change my job you do you do that kind of individual coach, or is it all on a business level, but individual business? Well, it's most of my coaching is uh, on the professional uh, side. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, let's say that they they come to me uh, saying I want to change my work, uh, or I have a problem with my boss, uh, or I'm not uh, happy with the situation. I love my work, uh, but I'm I don't feel well. Uh, uh, in uh, in the company or in the mm -hmm. team uh, I'm uh, I'm in. Okay. Uh, some of them uh, uh, come also because they want uh, uh, to um, uh, let's say uh, to think about uh, their their own uh, growth uh, also from a personal standpoint. Uh, usually mm -hmm. it's of or only professional or professional and personal. Okay. All right. So tell me some of the favorite tools that you like to use. Yes. This is the part I'm really interested in. It's like, uh, uh, and, and we'll just, we're just going to give you, we're going to show you, we're going to give you an idea, and then we're just going to tell you how you can find them because it's quite complicated, and she's brilliant at what she's doing. But it, it's just a way to let you know that there's some really cool things out there that I had never heard of. <laughs> yes. Well, one of my favorite tools uh, on when I work on a private basis uh, uh, is uh, Orasoma. And then I'm going to spell it for them, and if yes, I do it wrong, tell me. It's A U R A dash S O M A, and uh, there is a, a, a website if you want to beautiful have a look. Website, yeah. Beautiful <laughs> website, beautiful uh, website, and it's uh, www. Uh, as I said, uh, aura aura uh, dash uh, soma uh, oh, dot uh, n e uh, <gasps> net oh, n e t oh dot net okay dot right. net Great. Okay. okay so tell us the concept behind that yeah uh, well uh, the the concept this is a chromotherapy system it's a very complex system uh, very very powerful I'm, I have been using it in the last ten years. Um, and uh, it's based uh, on, uh, well, it, 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 it consists of uh, uh, 110 bottles, uh, B-colored uh, bo bottles. Uh, so Each bottle has two colors, yes, right? Yes, each right. bottle has two colors, and uh, the color uh, at the top of the bottle uh, uh, stands for your conscious mind. And the mm -hmm. color at the, um, at the bottom of the bottle uh, stands for your uh, unconscious mind. So, uh, well, the system is very complex as a chromotherapy system. Uh, in coaching, uh, I just have a big poster with, uh, in my office with uh, all the 110 bottles. Mm -hmm. And uh, especially when I have uh, 
uh, anxious people uh, or very confused people uh, or people that um, uh, who use a lot the mind and they don't listen to their feelings and their body right. uh, I, at the beginning of the session I just have them choose one or two bottles uh, and that's it's really important to me because to me, of course, uh, I gain a lot of information uh, uh, because uh, the color uh, uh, he chooses uh, has uh, a meaning. Uh, and again, the bottles mm -hmm. then uh, tell me uh, what's, what's going on, what probably is going on in his uh, conscious and unconscious mind. Mm -hmm. So uh, he chooses the bottle. Usually they, uh, they, 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 they have fun. I mean, they just look uh, at the poster saying, oh, I like this, I like this. And mm -hmm. then we, we just, uh, I just started uh, just telling them uh, what, what I can see from the colors. And of course, if he agrees, uh, usually they are quite astonished uh, <laughs> of uh, what's coming up. She keeps <laughs> being called a magician. They keep people asking her, are you a magician? It's like, how do you know that? <laughs> so when she did a reading for me, I go, are you a magician? Yes. <laughs> and uh, the result I have uh, is also that people are much more willing uh, to stop their mind, uh, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, listen to their feelings. Uh, so it, it's really a, a powerful uh, tool, a very simple one, because it's 10 minutes at the beginning of, uh, 10, 10, 15 minutes at the beginning of the session. It's just colors. And it's, it's aura-soma.com. And if you didn't get that. Dot net, sorry. Lori. Oh, thank you. No, no, I keep doing that, dot net. <laughs> and like I was going to say, if, if I mess up the name or <laughs> you didn't get it, then you can find Elena uh, more I'm on LinkedIn. You probably might have to put in Italian uh, coach yes, or something uh, like coach that. Coach or Milan, uh, because yes. uh, I, I, there are a lot of Elena Mauro in it. And, and so. she'll probably, you know, that then she can get back and tell you all about it. And and one thing I like also is that, and we don't, neither of us are experts in this, but just to loosen someone up, like you said, to just get them thinking about themselves in a different way. We both do a little bit of numerology if we have to, yeah. just to get them going. <laughs> it's not, not that we're experts, we know that, but it's just a way to get people to to start concentrating on themselves. There's also something that we've got like a minute and 15 seconds left, so we're not mm -hmm. going to tell them all about Dawquist. Yeah. But that is um, an evaluative tool that, I, and I've never seen anything like it, and I'm not sure. And I think it's the tool plus Elena's reading of the tool. So how can they find out about that? Besides well, there, through you, yeah, right? There is a, for for Dollquest again, there is a website uh, very well done, I have to say. So it's uh, <laughs> www.dollquest.t. Uh, oh, actually, I don't remember if it's a dot net. Uh, uh, Google it. Yes, Google dot, D -O -L yes, but if you Google it, 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 it comes uh, it yeah. comes up, and you can have a look and. Everything is explained. It's a, an assessment test, but it's a third generation systemic uh, assessment. And it's an test. international, all around the world. But I would recommend highly if it's something that you think you're interested in or your company's in that you get in touch with this lady because she is a genius on it. And it was like, <laughs> oh my gosh, it's bing, bing, bing. I was, I was so amazed. So I don't have any time left. I can't believe it. We want to tell you about so much more. So I'm going to have her back. I'm going to make her come back to New York and we're coming back. I want to thank you for being a fantastic guest and telling thank us you. what's happening on the other side of the pond, as they say, over, in, uh, <laughs> over there in Italy. <laughs> and invite you back, please. Oh, well, I will be very glad, uh, and thank you. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you. Thank you.